All right, it's Wednesday, and um, I've kind of want to been dipping back into the 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 core of why I started doing this in the first place, which is to put the what the fuck in what the fuck Wednesday. And um, I was going back. Uh, Caleb, who's on our Discord, uh, has been doing letter boxes of like the top fifty movies or whatever um, on IMDb, and and I know that a lot of other people have done like the bottom movies of all time. Uh, you know, on IMDb's bottom 100, you see, like, uh, you know, uh, Search for the Worst and this movie, Your Movie Sucks or whatever it's called. Um, and uh, I, I didn't, I don't want to go that road or anything like that. Uh, but I did want to just talk about one that is traditionally considered one of the worst movies ever made. And, and you, you'll get no disagreement from me um, in this one. Um, this isn't like. It, you know, there's no secret masterpiece to this one, but I do put this in the same category as a Plan 9 from Outer Space, where there is something so fascinating about something that's so bad and so inept that ultimately finds its audience and will will exist forever because of its its uh, imperfections, and and that is. Unlike many other media, uh, mediums, the film is one of those ones where you have literature and music that's so bad that people just can't get enough of it. Um, but film, I feel like, is something completely different. Film, you know, somebody will pass along a YouTube video of some dude who's a terrible singer or, or passages from some awful novel or something that they find on Reddit. But film is the one thing where something really bad uh, becomes a cult uh, because of the communal aspect of it where people can get together and can laugh uh, at it but in laughing at it you don't hate it you know you, you there, it's not like a movie that's like so fucking bad that it makes you angry uh, and the movie I want to talk about is Menos the Hands of Fate uh, and um, I know I first discovered this movie in 1993. I'll never forget it as long as I fucking live. Uh, the Thanksgiving uh, Turkey Day Mystery Science Theater, um, uh, they showed it um, after they did Bride of the Monster, and there was something so different about this movie. It was the first time that I had really seen it break Joel and the bots as well um and it was just one that I'd never heard of before like I'd heard of you know a lot of the bad movies that they had done on the show uh, a lot of them were part of the uh local tv packages um you know like the non-cable for some of you who are much younger you have no idea what I'm talking about um you know there used to just be like your, your UHF channels and they would have a package of movies that kind of got bicycled around um they were just filler it would be early in the morning or late at night stuff just just weird bad movies sometimes well most of the time um you know and that's where i discovered like gamera and 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 uh, the roger corman stuff not to say roger corman movies are bad or anything like that but just to um to discover these weird off-brand style movies and then your horror host in uh, here in philly we had stella um, discovering a lot of this stuff, and I'd never seen anything like Manos the Hands of Fate before. And I was recording the um, the, the Turkey Day uh, marathon, and I I was so fucking lucky that I recorded that that Manos uh, episode because then I started showing it to people. Um, you know, it was always that and Pod People um, and Ega were like some of my absolute favorites. Um, you know, uh, Hobgoblins. Um, you know, but Manos was the one that you would show people who maybe had never seen Mystery Science Theater before, and right there they got it. They understood what this show was all about, and the idea of that communal getting together and watching something really bad, and these brilliant comedians are, like, you know, saying the shit that we would say if we weren't dumb fifth graders at that time. Um, but, uh, so then I started doing, um you know, re looking into this movie more. And I remember going to the library uh, with my grandparents and, and in like 
I'll say like sixth grade and looking up Manus the Hands of Fate and finding that there's a movie poster for it. There's a black and white movie poster for it that came from a newspaper ad and then reading about Harold P. Warren, the director of, of and writer and star of Manos the Hands of Fate, um, that he was a fertilizer salesman in El Paso, which is so fucking fitting. You couldn't you couldn't make that up, you know? Um, and that the, uh, you know, the, the guy who played Manos, uh, was the, um, you know, was a stage, it was a act, stage actor and he also, sew, he sewed the, 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 the hands of fate cloak and the guy who played Torgo was high on LSD the entire time and he fucking blew his brains out before the movie premiered. Um, and reading about how like, uh, Harold P. Warren had made a bet with an editor, an award-winning editor, who he had known uh, that he could make a movie too, and uh, and what he made was was Manos, The Hands of Fate, um, that they had a premiere, and they could only afford one limo, so they had to keep driving the limo around the block to pick new people up, to drop them off out front of the theater. Um, but something like that is, is quaint. Something like that is very Ed Wood in that regard of, like, you know, it's people who don't know how to put on a show, putting on a show... Uh, and trying to get it as close to what they've seen in other places as possible to have that Hollywood uh, dream. Um, they shot on a camera that could only record like 30 seconds at a time, and it shows. Uh, and because of that, the audio was completely unusable, so like three or four people are doing everyone's voices in the entire thing. Um, it, it acts as this weird fever dream, and... and um, and I'd seen it a hundred times, and then other people after Mr. Science Theater got a hold of it, it became more of a thing, you know, and it had been featured in, like, uh, other TV shows, they're watching it and stuff like that, it's been referenced, they made a video game out of it um, that Sam Beddoes made, who then took the, 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 the core of that, and that's what he built the AVGN video game onto. I worked with Sam on AVG, AVGN 1 and 2 Deluxe when I was a producer on that game. Um, yeah, the uh, they wanted to have the girls in like the the robes like fighting, but they didn't feel comfortable, so they're wearing like nineteen fifties like granny panties and stuff like that. And um, the the guy who was kind of the the cameraman and the location guy and all that kind of stuff, he's the guy in the car who's making out with the girl. You get them just staring directly into the camera. You have just long scenes of just driving. Um, you know, there's. <laughs> It's it's just one of those movies that you watch it just like something like a Plan Nine from Outer Space and like your brain functions at a different level, you know. And and yes, it's it's an awful movie and it's boring as fuck. Um, but there's something special about it, something fascinating about the entire thing. When I used to run the uh, the Wayne Theater, I did an event. I did a series called Real Cult, and um, and uh, it was in. The, Manage the hands of phase it was in the public domain and um i was gonna run it and then uh i had it up on the marquee manage that you know when it's the hands of fate when it was playing or whatever and this guy comes into the lobby and um you know he's like oh i speak to the manager is doing this i was like, again yeah. he he went to serve me papers and i was like well wait a minute it's it's in the public domain so this guy was uh, was the lawyer of Harold P. Warren's son. They were getting out of the public domain because they were doing a 4K restoration because they found a 16 millimeter print of it that was in pristine uh, condition to make this new 4K uh, transfer of the movie. And uh, so this guy's getting ready to sue me over this whole thing, and I have no fucking clue. So I, I noticed he had a he you know he he, was, he had a Godzilla thing, and you know, so I started talking to him about Godzilla, and then we became friends from that. And he's like, ah, oh, we'll take care of the entire thing. Um, so I wound up to make it go away. I I I I, uh, I optioned or I, I rented the DCP, which is the digital file, so we could show the 4K restoration at the theater, and then he came out with some t-shirts and stuff like that. So we made it worth worth the while, and, and Ian and I are still really good friends, um, and we've been friends for since since that night. So that was kind of my my connection to Mystery Science Theater, because there was an article in Maxim or something, and Ian was in that when they were doing the restoration of it, and uh, I just kind of got caught up at that time period over the entire thing. But we, we, did, the, we did the event, I had an okay, okay turnout for it, but it was fun to, A, it's weird to watch the movie without Joel and the bots, 
you know, to not because you know where Tom Servo and Crow and Joel's jokes are going to go, the Mads jokes are going to go. Um, so every time you watch it, you automatically hear those beats in your head. Um, but a lot of people they had never seen the movie before, and to listen to their reaction made that night worthwhile because there was people who were just laughing first uncomfortably because they didn't know like what they were viewing. Um, like it was some kind of joke being played on them. Uh, and then in the end, people just had a really fucking good time because they got it. But there is a lot of dead spots in that movie. But there's also just a lot of stuff that's just so bizarre and so funny and so awkward that you can't not be charmed by the movie um, and why it fits in that world of the best of the worst, you know, not to quote the Red Letter Media dudes or whatever. Um, they made fun of me one time because of the plagiarism thing, so I, I unfollowed all their shit. And I used to really like them, too, but, you know, now they're just shitty for the sake of being shitty, and I don't, I'm, I'm talking nicely about <laughs> Manos the Hands of Fate. Um, you know, I like that, uh, I like how much day for night they shot, uh, because, um, you see a lot of movies now that, that, they, they just put a blue filter over everything. This one, you know, it, they clearly... You know it was real day for night because there's moths flying in front of the camera and they just left it in. Um, the guy who plays Torgo, you know, it's a shame that he never got to see the character that he created, you know? Um, he was he was clearly a troubled dude, um, but, like, he created, like, a character that people cosplay as and it's, it's a strange... I guess he's supposed to be, like, a satyr because he has giant knees and I guess um, there probably was supposed to be more makeup or whatever, but they didn't have the money for it. Um, you know, you have these weird scenes where the characters are looking directly into the camera. You have the scenes where, um, you know, the, 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 he goes to shoot the, um, the rattlesnake, but there's clearly, like, blue carpet under it because they shot it separately. Uh, you have the people, the two ladies at the end who come to the, the Valley Lodge, and, uh, Michael is now Torgo, um, and, like, they're just the worst actresses. I've seen bad acting in movies, but, like, this is a whole new level of bad acting. Um, the weird, uh, the, the wrestling of the, of the wives, the Debbie, the little girl becoming, uh, one of the wives is weird. Um, yeah, Torgo's bizarre, like, Macbeth speech, uh, you know, when he's in the, when he's in the, um, the tomb or whatever, uh, them trying to coax the dog into barking on camera. Um, two terrible movies that use row, row, row your boat. You have Mr. You have uh, Troll Two and Manos the Hands of Fate. Both feature row, row, row your boat very, uh, you know, very prominently. It's it's just one of those ones where I, I definitely recommend people watch the the Mystery Science Theater version of it. It's it's free on on YouTube. Um, but if you are interested in like bizarre z-grade movies that uh you know that i don't know who the some filmmakers said that some movies aren't released they escape and this is one of those movies that like a like a um uh miami connection it gets it comes out it gets wrecked by the by the people who did see it um and then it just vanishes and then out of nowhere it just fucking rises from the dead uh, and, um, and then it becomes part of our pop culture, you know, and, and I don't, there's not really many other things unlike that, uh, other than in film where you can find something that is such an abject failure, but it's discovered by the right people and then it becomes special. And that's why I love cult cinema and schlock cinema so much, so much, um, is just that, that, that. Thing where the audience then takes the power back and they're like yeah it's bad but it's fun and and it's fun to get together and and to laugh and and enjoy someone's weird outsider art you know and and what <laughs> harold p warren you know was not cut out to be a filmmaker um you know but he he won his bet he made his movie and uh, and his movie uh, it will live forever. You know they made sequels. Uh, they made a they made a, a Rise of Torgo prequel. Like I said, they made a video game. Um, Debbie is still alive. She was the little girl. Everybody else has passed. I believe. Yeah, I think I think Manos uh, passed as well. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just one of those weird 
beautiful things in the world of, of cult cinema, um, you know, like a like where uh, you know people will. It's I love the idea of just like you go, oh, man, it's the hands of fate, or oh, Plan Nine from Outer Space, or or you know uh, whatever. And then people are like, what is that? It's like, oh my god, you've never seen that? And then you have to show them this thing. And then, like, the ring, they need to pass, the, or it follows. They need to pass the sickness on to the next person. And, um, you know, so that's it. I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to kind of, I watched it last night. And um, I was like, you know what? I, I should talk about Manos, the Hands of Fate. Uh, because, you know, it's been talked about every youtuber who talks about bad movies has talked about that and troll 2 and and shit like that um but it's just like i i found myself just charmed by it all over again the other night and it, it brought back the memories of that night i still remember my friend brandon brooks he was my assistant manager um at the wayne but he's another he's a filmmaker as well um and uh just him howling with laughter from the back of theater number one and just being like, all right, he's never seen this before, and he was crying, laughing, um, and that's the kind of shit that I absolutely love. I love that, you know. I just I love that communal aspect of 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 trash cinema, um, where it brings people together, and and you know, it's not a mean spirited type of thing because it, you know the thing itself is terrible. You know, it's it's uh, it reminds me of like the threat level midnight episode of of The Office where. Michael's so tight about people making fun of his thing, and then once he gets it, the joy it's bringing other people who are laughing, he kind of realized, like, oh, yeah, no, it's it's dumb. Like, it's stupid. And I think Harold P. Warren kind of had that same vibe where he's like, yeah, I made a really fucking bad movie, but I made this movie, and we have it forever now. And he used to apparently wear the, the, the master's, uh, you know, robe uh, for every Halloween and... and um, and we have this movie now forever and and there's something really really cool about that that this these you know these cinematic failures can can one day rise from the grave and and find new afterlife and and become part of our 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 cinematic pop culture and uh you know and and you know i don't know it's neat it's it's cool it's cool to think about uh you know um because it didn't come from a place you can tell when a movie comes from a place of cynicism um, yeah, I'm, I can, I'll make a bet that I can make a movie too, but then you have to actually go and make the movie, you know, it's not just like, oh, fuck you, I could do that, you know, it's, it is a matter of, I gotta get these people together, I gotta get a camera together, what, what do you mean it only films for 30 seconds, you, you know, uh, what do you mean my main, my, one of my main actors is high, uh, off his fucking balls, you know, dude's fucking higher than pterodactyl titties right now, and he's one of my, my main actors, um, you know, it, it's still the process of putting it together. And then when you're left, all the little pieces all come together and then you step back and you look at the puzzle and you're like, Oh God, what have I done? Um, but other people will look at it and, and have a good laugh and go, Oh God, what has he done? Like, this is amazing. Um, so that's why I'll take a movie like, you know, like Manos, the hands of fate over fucking like Transformers two any day. Like any of those big budget bad movies are just made by an assembly line, and this was a small group of people uh, putting on a fucking show, and and you know one by one getting dropped off at the at the at the uh, movie theater for the premiere, and then it drives around the block and drops the next one off. Um, and there's just something really cool about that, and I would have loved. I've seen. I love the behind the scenes. Uh, stuff because they 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 kept all the uh, the heads and the tails of takes in there and it's weird to see like oh yeah they you know because mystery science theater make a crew like they make a joke they're like this movie had a crew like everybody pick out somebody you want to punch um, or his joke of like every frame of this movie looks like someone's last known photograph uh, but it's cool to see that like there were people who worked behind the scenes on this and everybody's smoking a lot there's a lot of chain smoking on the movie. Um, and it's weird. You don't really, you can't get that anymore. They're, you know, you because anytime now people go out and they make a bad movie, they're trying to do it on purpose. And uh, you know, and you that's how you get a, you know, you tell you get like a Birdemic two or like a Samurai Cop two or or, um, you know, fucking uh, Kung Fury or something like that. They're trying to be self aware, and these people weren't had no awareness whatsoever. And that is the kind of bad cult fun filmmaking that I prefer 
and that um, I'll always hold in high regard. And I'll always remember the very first time I ever saw Mystery Science Theater premiere Manos the Hands of Fate. And um, it just always became one of those things where, you know, whenever I'm talking about bad movies, people, uh, when I was in middle school and high school, like way before like the internet was far more prevalent, um, I would always bring up Manos the Hands of Fate. And, um, and yeah, it was always a favorite of ours. And I'm, I'm glad I revisited it. And um, that's it. That's all I want to talk about this uh, this What the Fuck Wednesday, the, the real What the Fuck. Um, you do, uh, go check out uh, you know the Mystery Science Theater episode or one of the many other people who've reviewed the movie who are far more eloquent than me and, and go into far more of the backstory and stuff like that. I just uh, I don't know. I, I just I think it's cool and um, and and charming and and I'm really glad that I got to spread that sickness onto other people back in the day and i'm glad i got a chance to show it on the big screen and and show it to show it to so many people for the first time um that it's it's a special movie it's it's definitely up there in the in the the troll twos and the you know in the and the the uh plan nine from outer spaces and stuff like that so that's it that's all for this week guys um and uh yeah if there's any other like really bad movies you want me to check out um obviously again it's been done by uh, a million other YouTubers, but um, you know, I, I have been in this mood to kind of go back and rewatch a lot of stuff that like was special to me in those in those formative years of like bad movie watching. Um, so yeah, drop those on me. And uh, and have you seen Manos the Hands of Fate before? Uh, have you seen it without the bots? Um, I don't know. Whatever. Tell me whatever in the in the in the in the uh, the comments. Just feed the algorithm. Have a good one, guys.